Hi there, my name's Elizabeth and I like to sew smart. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a, a ruler carrier for your square rulers. Uh, my last project was a long ruler carrier and this one will be a carrier for your 12 and a half inch, your 9 and a half inch and your 6 and a half inch square plus your rotary cutter. So this is fabric that I have had left over from a project and I've used this before on a couple of my projects but I still have a little bit left. You can use whatever fabric you have. I've cut out two lots of squares plus wadding for the actual bag that's going to take my 12 and a half inch ruler and then I've used a spotted fabric which is going to take my nine and a half inch and then on the top I didn't have quite enough of this left so I've made a join before I stitch it right sides together I've actually joined two pieces together but this side will be the lining so that you won't need to worry about that it won't be seen that will take my six and a half ruler and then on the top of that I will put another little pocket that will actually hold my rotary cutter the pocket for the six and a half inch square is the one we're going to start with and it measures nine inches or uh, 23 centimeters and all you have to have is your nine inch squares you will need two one for the lining and one for the top and right sides together you need to put those onto a piece of lightweight wadding I'm going to leave the top open because it's going to be bound it needs to be a bit stronger along the top so I'm going to stitch it quarter of an inch all the way around the bottom and up the sides leaving the top section open so I'll put my pins in and I will take this to the machine and stitch it all the way around leaving the top open I stitched all the way around on the inside with a quarter inch seam, turned it, I clipped the corners actually just a little bit either end to make the corners a bit sharper and turned it to the right side out. This is the lining, there is a, a join just here which you can't see. Now I'm going to turn that over, this will be the top side and a small piece of binding, I've taken off my binding that I've cut out for the whole bag. I'm going to pop that on the top, stitch it down across, flip it over and you can either hand stitch it to the back or you can machine it. I've just tucked the ends under of the binding strip to give it a nice neat finish and then you can hand stitch that together and I'm just going to sew down this now with a one quarter inch foot. We'll leave a nice one quarter inch seam of course all the way down to the bottom and I will just tuck that in just a little bit more at the end you can do it by hand of course when you've finished just so that goes under and then we'll back stitch that just a little bit I've sewn the binding stitch on and tucked the ends in so I've machined mine on so it is nice and firm both sides and also I'm because I'm using a, a diagonally striped fabric I've put a white chalk line from corner whoops from corner to corner and then three and a quarter inches out is another line three and a quarter inches this way another line and then I'm going corner to corner in the other diagonal three and a quarter out three and a quarter out and I'm just going to cross hatch that now stitch down that uh, instead of stippling you can stipple and there is a handy hint on my uh, of mine handy hint I think number three and that will show you an easy way of stippling so you could follow that so this is my now finished six and a half inch square pocket this of course with the um, binding on the top means the sharpness on the corners of your ruler won't uh, cut into the fabric quite so much it will give it a bit of extra bonding 
So I'm now going to put the piece on to hold your rotary cutter. This is a piece of fabric cut five and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. My rotary cutter will fit nicely into that. But if you have a bigger rotary cutter, of course, you must adjust the size of your pocket. I'm going to put that with right sides again together. Just crease it a little bit there. And I'm going to stitch with my quarter inch foot around there. I'm going to leave the top. I'm going to top stitch that once I've stitched it inside and then I'm going to stitch it to within one inch of either side at the bottom and leave that piece at just there, inch, inch and a half there, open to turn. I've turned the pocket the right way out after stitching it inside. It is open at the bottom and when I stitch around it I'm going to catch that seam in. I've stitched across the top just to give it a little bit more strength when I stitch down this side, I'm going to do it with a quarter inch and then I'm going to go around again with an eighth of an inch all the way around, all the way across the bottom, up to the top, leaving this open, ready to put my rotary cutter in. I've stitched around a quarter of an inch all the way around and then I stitched again around just one eighth of an inch. So there's one eighth of an inch in between those two. So now my pocket is all ready to slip my rotary cutter in, all nice and snug. And that completes the first pocket of our square ruler carrier. Our next pocket is to hold the nine and a half inch rule. And when we have finished that, of course, the one we just made will sit nicely positioned on the top there. So this one has to be cut at 11 and 3 quarter inches square or 30 centimeters if you use metric measurements and what we're going to have to do first is to quilt it before we can finish it and all I'm going to do is with my iron off pen my friction iron off pen I'm going to just quilt it diagonally from corner to corner so I'm marking it with a line Turn it round, corner to corner again, and I'm going to quilt through all three layers, all three from corner to corner on the whole block. So I've crossed, cross hatched across the fabric from both sides and ironed off my uh, friction pen. I have also, because I like this to be nice and square and taut, because it is going to be seen, I've had a put a light zigzag, a narrow zigzag, all the way around the edges so that when I come to put my binding on, which is my next step, it will sit lovely and square. For my binding, I've got two strips across the fabric of two and a half inches wide, and I'm just going to press that in half. I've joined those two strips together and if you want some handy hints on joining binding and putting binding on, which is my what I'm now going to do, you can refer to my handy hint number one and two, and it will show you not only how to put the binding on, but it will give you uh, three different ways of actually joining it when you come to the end. I've stitched my binding on all the way around and using my method that I showed you in the handy hint one and two, you'll see that it's nicely caught in on the back and what I've done now is taken the first pocket we made, pinned it on the top, and it will fit the six and a half inch rule just nicely. And I'm going to stitch the top pocket to the pocket we've just made all the way through, all layers, starting at the binding at the top and finishing on the other side, back stitching before I start and when I finish. And it's approximately one and three quarter inches that I've done mine and an inch and a quarter at the bottom. And that should make, make it look really nice and really square. Now I've stitched my little pocket on that takes my six and a half inch ruler very nicely. It'll go right in secure. And I've stitched it, double stitched it a quarter and then an eighth of an inch all the way around. So now I'm going to set that pocket aside, but just a little handy hint I like to put a button 
on the top so when you're traveling if you lay these in the back of your car you don't want your ruler slipping out so these are little hair bands and they stretch I will sew one just into there and a button on just to secure that so it won't go anywhere possibly you could put one on here I didn't but you could put one on here as well just to secure that and now the next step from here once we've done that is our handles now the, the remaining bag is an actual bag and it will have handles on and that's going to hold your 12 and a half inch ruler and for that you have to have two sections of three layers so you've got your outside fabric you've got your lining fabric and your wadding in between and you'll have two sections like that but next is the handles now the handles because you are going to first bind the top and then because you will need to leave the top open like a bag you will bind around the bottom and across across the bottom and up the sides but your handles are going to be caught into that binding and they will need to go on approximately there you can shorten them a bit I've got mine at 42 inches each my handles are 42 inches so that would be the one on the front side and then of course this will sit over the top you won't actually see the handles on the front you'll just see this little bit at the bottom and to make the handles you will need two strips across the fabric I've got blue because I had spare and that was left over four inches wide across the fabric and cross cut to 42 inches and all you do is you will fold it in half and press it and then fold into the center from both outside selvages and press and then fold it over and press again and it will form a one inch strap a handle to go around and all I've got going to do and I've already done one is stitch at one eighth of an inch on both sides of the handle that I've just pressed so I've stitched my second handle but before I put my handles on I've actually put the binding on the top now you would have had a good piece of binding left from your six and a half inch uh, pocket and that's enough to go across the top for one side and I've marked a chalk line I'll just show you the binding actually in there both sides caught in and I've put a chalk line to line up the handles four inches in from the outer selvages leaving approximately six inches in the middle and I'm lining up my handle bring it to the bottom I'm just going to pull it a little bit off the bottom about perhaps an eighth of an inch make sure it's not twisted at the top position the other one as well and I'm going to pin those into place now when I sew them on I'm going to sew on over the lines that I've actually put on the handles already but I'm only going to sew to about an inch, an inch and a quarter from the top and I'm going to sew across there double and back and down the other side on both of them just gives it a little bit more strength when you're carrying and so I'll stitch those on and I will repeat for the other side of the bag which is put the binding on the top and put the handle on in the same way that you did this. Do pin around your edges to hold your three layers in place because you'll regret it if you don't. My handles are now stitched on as I just told you uh, to within an inch and a quarter of the top all the way around. I have trimmed off the bottom the one eighth of an inch. That's all that's the back of the the bag. Now the front this is where you take your pockets the ones that you did completed and you're going to pin them onto your the front of your bag you've still got the handles inside you're going to pin it one and a quarter inches in from the outside edge and across the bottom remember you must leave the top open pin it securely and then you can stitch around on the, the binding line the stitch line you can back stitch at the beginning all the way around across the bottom up the other side back stitching as you finish at the top and then that's the front of your bag completed and all that will remain to be done then is you're going to line up your 
your um, straps on the back and pin the back to the front with a lining inside. Now my pocket stitched on really securely. You can see the inside there. I'm laying the front on the back with the lining sides together. And I will pin that. And I'm going to put binding because we already bound the top. So I'm going to actually bind the sides and along the bottom. Now, when you go to bind the side, what I do is I turn in the edge of the binding just a little bit, but I've got about three quarters of an inch there. Turn it in and press it because you don't want it at the top. When you've got it at the top, and you're going to stitch it on there. When you come to flip it over to the back, then you can just hand stitch across the top and it will lay very, very neatly. So this is the binding that you've got left over there. I think there's about one and one and a half or one and three quarter strips left, which is ample to go all the way around. And then the last thing I'm going to do, and this is totally optional, but I'm going to put the little hair bands on and the button on the six and a half pocket. And I'm going to put one on. You can choose which color, of course, you put on. And then I'm going to stitch a button on there so that they will remain nicely closed and it just finishes up your bag off with a little more bling and then you're ready to put your rulers in. So I'm now going to put my binding on and when I've done that, I'll show you the finished bag. So my bag is all finished now. I put the binding on all the way around and hand stitched the little edges at the top. That's the back of your bag. So you've got your main bag with your 12 and a half inch square in, fits nice and snug in there. The next one down is your nine and a half inch square, nice and snug in that one. And then you've got your six and a half inch square in this one, nice and secure. And your cutter in the top pocket. And now you're all ready to go sewing or to retreat, whatever you're going to do. If you, if you want to put more than one ruler in each pocket, you can, but remember you need to put a piece of card in between them to save the, protect the surface and save it from getting scratched. And then you're all ready, all complete. You now have a square ruler carrier.